Hello and welcome into the Rotowire Esports Show. I'm Andrew Laird, joined as always by Ethan Sexton. Today to talk about Friday's four-game LPL LCK slate. Uh, Ethan, uh, I'm going to start this video by patting us on the back. Um, we talked yesterday about how we might uh, avoid the two huge favorites, uh, thinking that they may be, have to just, uh, or won't have to do much. Um, Damwon got their revenge against Fred at Brian, but it wasn't uh, wasn't the bloodbath we were necessarily thinking of. WA right. dropped a game to OMG, um, which I think many people were expecting or not expecting to happen. So uh, we were talking about how we would we were kind of interested in uh, EDG and Hanwha, and uh, that combination came through. Yep, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, so we were both on the right teams, but just had the wrong combos, right? Um, so I went for, uh, I actually ended up going for a four-man uh, HLE stack with, with three EDG, um, Viper as my captain, double AD carry, and uh, you needed the four EDG, and double mid was the, the big winner in the tournament I was in, 676 points, which is um, 30, about 30, 12, 29 ahead of where, what I had, so close but no cigar, but yeah, um, you know, at least we were on the, the big teams, and yeah, Damwon, they got their, their revenge by winning, but they really didn't uh, need to, no, no, to no. bring out the whooping stick too bad, I guess, and, and really smash them, so yeah. Um, did yeah, you end up I playing mean, was, Flandre? Did I end up playing Flandre? Yeah, yep. Um, my lineup was Viper Captain, Flandre, EDG team, and then jungle through support, I had uh, HLE. So, I liked Flandre because... Um, I just think he he has he had more upside than Morgan. Like we've seen him take over slates and carry games, uh, so went that route, um, which I think paid off. I don't think Morgan outscored him. I, I don't see Morgan anywhere. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're, gonna you're gonna have to scroll. You're gonna have to scroll all the way so down to my line to find Morgan. I think that was a good decision. It was just uh, the double mid was the one that really paid off, and, and really you needed to have four EDG players, and you would have been in business. But that's all right. I mean, um, still happy with the analysis and. Uh, was close so at least made a little bit of money but you know it's better than nothing right yeah i uh i also went with that combo viper captain but i played morgan and as soon as i saw the winning lineup um obviously it had the double mid but it was like i saw the score difference between flandre and morgan and i was like i messed that one up that was clearly where i should have gone yeah i think it's just that uh, morgan's more of like a play for the team play tanks play weak side kind of guy where yeah. Flandre also does that sometimes, but he also has games where he just smashes. Um, few, few and far between, of course, but we there was that one slate where if you captained him and went double top, um, that was the that, that was what you needed to have that day. And I, yep. I can't remember exactly how many kills he had, but you know, just that upside um, that we've seen out of him made me want to go there over Morgan. Yeah, no, it uh, it made sense, and it was one of those things that I just kind of like. I think I was so concerned about getting the Viper captain and getting my four HLE that I was just like, oh, I'll just fill in. And like, yeah. uh, it was lazy. I'll put it that way. It was lazy. Um, jumping into this Friday slate, uh, we have FPX, a uh, gigantic favorite against Thunder Talk. And then three fairly close matchups. Uh, DRX favored against uh, Red Force. Yep. KT favored against your boys from Sandbox. And then LGD uh, favored against E Star, but like I said, all of those are fairly close. Um, FPX seems to be falling into the category of the huge favorite that we may not need to play because they're so hugely favored and could win fairly easily that um, taking them almost it doesn't end up with enough points. Uh, yeah, but. I feel like the 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 other three series could go anyway, and um, I'm not like excited to play anybody. <laughs> no, no, uh, yeah, I'm I'm with you. Um, you know, FPX. This is kind of a smash spot for them. Should but be. Yeah, the back of our minds, um, we do have to consider at least. You know, is it going to be too easy? Right, like we talk about on in matchups that are like this a lot, but. Um, you know, FPX lead this slate in kills, though, by a fair amount. And, An absurd uh, amount. And uh, Thunder Talk have given up over 400 deaths this year. So I'm not, like, too scared off of using FPX. It's just okay. you got to figure out, if you want to go that route, you got to figure out uh, what are you going to be partnering them with, right? That's where the tricky part would come in. So 
Uh, Andrew, can I interest you in Sandbox, my friend? <laughs> they are coming off of a huge sweep against Gen G, and they are in form, man. Can I can I go back to the Sandbox? Well, do you need to talk me off the ledge? <laughs> So they got smashed against uh, uh, Red Force like two weeks ago, right? But yeah. then last week, their only series, they swept Gen G, right, in shocking fashion. Um, and now this KT team is, you know, decent at best, right? Come at on, best. man. We got we to gotta bring Sandbox into the fold here and give them some, some consideration, right? No? No? Not feeling it? I don't know. Um. Ah. <laughs> uh. I, I think they are more of a live favorite than Thunder Talk. Yep, um, okay. I we have spoken many times um, that actually is Red Force favored. No, they're not. Um, we've spoken many times about how uh, Diokdom is really the only player we want to play from Red Force. Yep. Um, so that leaves Sandbox and E Star, and I think a lot of people will play E-Star with the expectation that they can put up a huge score against a similar-ish team in terms of quality from top to bottom. Yep. I think LGD is a little better, but but they're close enough. So that leaves you with Sandbox. Um, <laughs> well, here's the, here's this the is thing why we never say, I'm no. never playing whoever again, because here we are thinking, yeah, maybe I will play Sandbox. I yeah, I mean, I think my um, thought process is definitely skewed by their last result. Okay, sweeping Gen G is like what a huge shock that was, mm -hmm. and now they're playing KT, who are you know not a great team, right? Not they're sixth place. They're just yeah. inside the last playoff spot, but um, could be right for the picking maybe. So here's the th here's my thing with Sandbox, I guess. Okay, if you want to play FPX, you can't long stack FPX. Uh, with anybody except Sandbox, I'm pretty sure. Uh, maybe you could do it with Red Force. Um, let me try it real quick. But are you that, like, if I, I don't know. You can't do it with Red, Red Force either, okay? Unless you just, you, if you want to have uh, a uh, FPX carry option, that is, okay? So I want, maybe I want to long stack FPX and I want to have LWX as my captain. And maybe I got to go to Sandbox to do it. And maybe I'm a glutton for punishment and I'm going to do it, man. <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, I, I sort of, I am going into this fully, uh, fully knowledgeable of what Sandbox can do with that sweep against Gen G, right? Yeah. But I'm also fully aware of what they can't do. And that's uh, win a lot of matchups this year. So um, I think it's sort of a risky play. But if I can get them at low ownership, in a matchup, I think that they could win, and I can get four FPX with the LWX captain. Man, it might be worth the risk. Um, so you can't do a carry captain like an LWX captain or a do and be captain with LGD or E Star. So like that right. whole series is is gone. Yep. Uh, you're obviously not going to do it with any of the other uh, favorites um, because they're more expensive than than those teams are. Um, so like that takes DRX out. Um, and who's the other one? Oh, KT. But you, but I, I didn't want to play KT anyway. Um, I think if you are brand, not brand new, but I, but if you are, if you still have money left from all the times that you lost with Sandbox, I think it makes perfect sense to try them on this slate specifically. I, I think it's, it's absolutely worth the risk. Yeah. I think, you know, Am I partly chasing? I don't know. Maybe a little because I didn't play them against Gen G, right? Um, but I, I, and I guess maybe I'm biased because I always talk about them, right? And uh, said I liked their lineup at the beginning when we first started doing these, and yeah. then they were awful. Uh, but I'm just thinking on, like, I see the path to victory on this slate um, against KT because I do think KT are. They've been better all season, right? But uh, wouldn't surprise me at all if Sandbox could could win this series. So that's kind of just where I'm at on that Sandbox one, man. And uh, yeah, uh, I don't know. I might go for it. I think I might. <laughs> I mean, it's pretty clear you're definitely going for it. It's just a matter of uh, oh, yeah. knowing knowing the risk here. Um, sure. 
What do you think the popular move is for people who don't want to play FPX? Do you think it's like a, like, I just feel like LGD, I, I think LGD might be really underowned because people think that E-Star might be able to do something against them. Yep. Um, but you're still having to, you know, finagle your way if you want another favorite, like it's not super easy. Um, but like, who do you think the, do you think people go there? I guess you could do LGD DRX. That's not so bad. Right. Um, but I feel like if you're not playing FPX, then you should play those two. You shouldn't go to KT. And I yeah, hope it's not because um, you just convinced me that Sandbox is winning. <laughs> I think that um, DRX would be the next, best team right the the team with the next best upside right um we could like we could probably say that about kt as well because sandbox have been pretty bad um and kt and wins are are, are decent okay um they're not bad I, I think kt are actually third on the slate and kills behind F, total kills anyway behind fpx and uh drx but i think if you're not playing fpx there's really no reason not to go right to drx for um your 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 main stack probably um and then you know figure out where you want to go for there so we've kind of talked about the sandbox kt series enough already but e-star and lgd is an interesting one because i think you're probably right like battle of two bad teams so will people just go down to the cheaper of the two which is e-star on this slate um you know i don't know i I don't know if I like, – I think people will do that, but but I don't know if I, like, am in love with that idea. Um, so I think either team has a chance of winning, which makes it difficult to predict, right? Yeah. But I think what I keep going back to when I think about that series is a thing we've talked about with LGD a lot, and that was they've really only lost to good teams. Um, so they're not a good team. We're not going to stretch it that far, right? And you could tell by the record they're 2-8. and eight. They're pretty bad. But their losses are all to good teams, you know, teams higher than them in the standings. And then their two wins are against teams that are below them in the standings. Right. And guess who's below them in the standings currently? E-Star. So I don't think we can just write LGD off and say, I want the cheaper team, right? I, I think we um, can definitely look at LGD and think that they have a pretty good chance and, and deserve to be favored in this series. Um, but the question that comes in with LGD, and maybe you can help me out if you've got this up, you know, so they only have 196 kills um, in 23 games played this year. So in wins, I don't know how many kills they average in wins, uh, but it seems like it's going to be a paltry amount, right? So is their upside on this slate, even if they win, going to be enough? Like E-Star to give up a lot of deaths, so maybe that can ampl amplify LGD's kill totals a little bit, but um, that, that gives me a little bit of pause, even if I think that LGD are going to win that series are they going to get enough points to really uh, help us out? You know, that, that, that can be in question a bit. Yeah. So uh, LGD ha are averaging 15 and a half kills per win. Six, six games. Right. Like FPX have won 20. Uh, yeah. And obviously we know that they're very different caliber teams, but like right. six is the lowest on the slate. Um, yeah. I, I think it's reasonable to think that they just won't score enough. Um, like they LGD just in, in total, uh, is averaging eight and a half kills per game. Um, yeah. a lot of that is cause they just lose all the time, but like, right. um, FPX average over 16, like literally almost double, uh, and KT is next at 12.2. Yep. So like that, everything screams FPX, like, yeah. uh, yeah, Thunder Talk kind of lead in, in deaths, Sorry. like it's. Sorry. Um, yeah, that's kind of why I don't really have a lot of pause with using FPX. It's just who can you fit them in with is the bigger question to me, right? Yeah. Um, FPX and wins are, are, are dominant, right? And, you know, we can say there's a small consideration that they just roll TT, but, you know, FPX feels like one of those teams that can still put up the, the kill totals we want in, uh, you know, two-game destruction series sweep, right? So... I don't have a ton of pause. Like when you say that KT are next on the slate with only 12 kills a game, yeah. it's like, uh, oh, man, the, the upside really isn't, isn't where we want it. Right. So I think what I'm more interested in is basically if, if you don't want to play FPX, which 
like you're not playing them because they are by far the best play on the slate and everybody knows that. And so you just want to get somewhere else. Right. Like the, the number of combinations of uh, teams of, of players from the other teams is so long before I get to the thought of playing Thunder Talk. Like, okay. it's just not like every, we talk about this all the time. Like, oh, the biggest leverage is just take the team against the biggest favorite. But like, even if Thunder Talk wins, I think you can get so many more points elsewhere. Yeah, I, I agree. With, I just can't even see them winning. So like, I, <laughs> I, like I feel like it's just not even bother. Like it's not even worth us discussing them winning because they're just not going to win. <laughs> That's fair. But yeah, I, I agree with you. Like, if they won, are they going to smash? FPX, like, it's hard to imagine, but I think part of that is just it's hard to imagine them even winning, right? So, right. yeah, I'm with you. Like, I'm not – like, the, the ownership leverage play is not to play TT. It's just not – it's to not play FPX just because right. they're probably going to be very high owned. So, yeah, I, I'm with you, man. Yeah, <laughs> it's just more like you can't long stack – like, it's not even worth long stacking another favorite with FPX because you can't even do it. So, like, just no. – if you're going to try to get different, just don't play FPX. Yep, right. I agree. Yeah. I agree, but just know going in, folks, that FPX by far have the most upside on this. Oh, slate. yeah, absolutely. So, um, yeah, but from a leverage play, like ownership play perspective, then fading them is, you know, a way to go. Like, it, it worked out today, you know, with um, with Damwon and, and WE score. That I believe those were the two highest. We or We did say this already. Like, those are the two highest uh, favorites on the slate, and they didn't score very well. So, yeah. you know, it can happen, certainly. But I just think on this slate where you don't have an EDG or a Hanwha Life uh, as a backup plan, it uh, really screams FPX uh, scoring the most points tomorrow to me. Do you uh, like Sandbox enough? Um, how do I phrase this? Do you like Sandbox enough to outscore a short stack from either of the other two series that is in FPX, or do you just like them because it fits with FPX? Well, you got to take this with a grain of salt because remember who you're talking to, right? But uh, so I like them because I think they can win the series. And if they win, I think they score well enough to go with a four man FPX lineup that um, I have a lineup with a lot of upside. Yeah. Uh, like, do I think they outscore the other underdogs that aren't Thunder Talk if they all won? Right. That's the right. I think they do out if they if say so. Say Sandbox, E Star, and Red, Red Force, Force all win. I think Sandbox outscores Red Force. Yeah, E Star is a little. You just but never I know. I don't know about E Star, but I'm wondering if it's because like when I look at these series. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, the E-Star one, I, I think E-Star could outscore them for sure. Okay. Um, and I just think Red Force aren't going to beat DRX, so I think that's why I think Sandbox, even though I'm not like positive they're going to win tomorrow, I think the chance of them winning um, makes me want to play them over Red Force because I don't see Red Force winning, if that makes sense. Yeah, but like even like we have mentioned <laughs> it a bunch that like even if we, if Red Force wins, these guys just don't score enough. No. And so I think what you're really thinking is the sandbox outscore E Star. And uh, I think the obvious answer is maybe. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. I, you know, E Star definitely have had upside in wins, probably more upside than sandbox, honestly. But I mean, uh, their biggest. You also can't fit four FPX with E Star, though. Right. So, you know, you got to um, kind of give and take somewhere if you want to go with them instead. I think E Star's highest scoring. Uh, game or series this season though was in a loss. Yeah, it was. So like, it was. Uh, yeah. So can they do that tomorrow? Maybe. I don't know. I, I don't know if they lose to LGD. It's a bloody enough series to, to yeah. make that happen. You know what I mean? Right. But, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm not like trying to tell people sandbox are a safe play tomorrow, but I do think they're where I'm going. <laughs> um, um, I I mean, I think. After not being able to benefit from them winning against Gen G, you gotta just go right back to it. Yeah, I mean, I'm definitely chasing a little, but at least in my mind, I can see them. Uh, I can see them beating KT, so I don't right. think it's too crazy. Yeah, no, I think it, it makes total sense. Absolutely, especially just with how 
how much upside we're expecting out of FPX. So, yep. All right. Uh, if you guys are jumping on the sandbox bandwagon, let's get a let's get a like down below. Uh, or if you just think Ethan is chasing, uh, feel free to hit that like button as well. Um, yep. You can also subscribe to all the Rotowire videos to get uh, all of them delivered right into your phone or computer, wherever you watch. Um, you can also subscribe to Rotowire. Uh, just go to rotowire.com slash subscribe to see all of our prices for the different sports, or you can buy them all. If you want to try out Rotowire for free for 10 days, just go to rotowire.com slash pod. That's P-O-D. Uh, like I said, 10 free days on the site, no credit card required, access to everything that we have on the site, as well as our subscriber Discord chat. Ethan, thank you for that. Good luck to you and Sandbox on Friday. All right, let's go Sandbox one time, baby. <laughs> <laughs>